and some academic basis in this direction. And uh, the section two will be focused on our pilot study. I give the evaluation part for our pilot study to show you what is sunny and what we did for this process. Okay, as we all know, the World Food Energy Nexus in the 21st century, we have lots of issues, such as the global warming, population increase, energy consumption, water pollution, and water stress. A, a greenhouse gas emission increased by, will, be, uh, will increase by 46% by 2030, causing the energy consumption, the very huge energy consumption. And I can show you our target in China. The total energy demand reduced is about 18% uh, uh, 18, 18 during our third, fifth national plan period in China. It's a big, big topic, right? And also, the world population will increase from 7 billion to maybe 8 billion, maybe more than, in the 2030. And the faster urbanization in our world the people increase will cause the food supply, you know, increased intensively. And also our water pollution. Now, based on the WHO data, about 2.6 billion people without sanitation and 80% disease in developing countries are water related. So water is, is, a, is a big issue for us. And we also have the water stress, okay? Now about 900 million people without clean water, also based on the WHO's water. And uh, lots of uh, mega cities and all regions run out of drinking water, such as the Cape Town, water stress. And even in our Beijing, Beijing, our capital, right? Water is the key for the multi-connection in the sustainable development. So, we have the evolution in the wastewater management. The management for wastewater treatment shifting from, is shifting from fresh water based to saline water based technologies. Why? Why we have the, the salt water? Because the seawater toilet flushing, manufacture of pesticide, organic, organic peroxide, pharmaceuticals, even the landfill leachate, the, the meat packing wastewater, and even the contaminated groundwater, mining, brine solution, all contain the, the all, all, all will generate the uh, saline sewage or saline wastewater. The salt water needs the intensive treatment in our water reclamation and reuse systems. So the challenge in biological treatment for saline sewage or saline wastewater is the limited extent of adaption sensitive to changes in ionic strength, even the reduced de uh, degradation kinetics, high effluent, suspended solid concentration, and even the inhibition of the biodiversity to uh, against our uh, the anaerobic anaerobic metabolism for phos polyphosphate accumulating organisms such as even some OHO ordinary hydrotrophic organisms. Based on that kind of background, we developed the innovative sulfur cycle associated biotechnology. We call it SANI, sulfate reduction, autotrophic denitrification, nitrification integrated process. The influence from uh, influence maybe from the saline sewage, you know, this, this technology uh, were developed originally in Hong Kong. Hong Kong used the seawater as for the toilet flushing to save the fresh water. And after toilet flushing, we generate the saline sewage with abundance of sulfate and also COD. The COD is about 400 milligram per liter. The sulfate is about uh, 600 and ammonia is about 30 or 33 uh, or 38 something milligram per liter. This kind of saline sewage go into the sulfatogenic anaerobic reactor, the first one. We use this kind of anaerobic reactor rather than the anaerobic uh, methanogenic reactor because we want to utilize the electrons in our COD. 
we transfer the electron from COD into the sulfate and generate sulfite. The sulfite will be as the electron donor for next autotrophic denitrification process. So we removed the nitrogen, ammonia, ammonia nitrogen in the next step. Means nitrification and denitrification. Compared, we can see uh, we have two cycles and three cycles. The traditional, uh, the traditional wastewater treatment process uh, uh, consists of two cycles, the carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle. And about 80, uh, about 56% electrons flow into biomass in the ordinary heterotrophic uh, process. That process is, is a fresh water based. Sludge is mainly generated from the organic removal via heterotrophic oxidation and the denitrification process. Extensive sludge. But if we insert the sulfur cycle into the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle, we utilize the, the sulfate as an electron shuttle to transfer our electron from carbon to nitrogen for removal uh, carbon, a COD, and uh, ammonia. So the saline water-based sulfur cycle bacteria has very low yield coefficient. The sulfur conventional the conversion-based bioprocess produce much less sludge than the conventional, the above one, two cycles, the conventional process, the original. This is the history, overall, overall figures for our uh, history of saline process developed. Firstly, the concept was built up in 2003. And based on this concept, we conducted uh, two or three years the lab skill study in Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And, and after that, we scaled up this process into a, a pilot study from 2007 to 2010. And finally, in, uh, during 20, uh, 2013 to 2017, we conducted the full-scale demonstration trial with a treatment capacity of 1,000 cubic meters per day, saline, real saline sewage in Hong Kong, Shati Sewage Treatment Works, and achieved about 60 to 70 percent of biological slot reduction, saving 30 to 40 percent space, saves uh, uh, 20 to 30 percent energy and CO2 emissions. And uh, during this process, we get some awards I listed below. And also, we conducted some basic researches recently. For example, the biological sulfur reduction process, the organic carbon conversion various co uh, with the various sulfur source, such as the micro, uh, microbial organic pollutants degradation in our SRB, sulfate reduction, sulfate reduction uh, biological systems, such as the SMX, the CIP. And we also try to uh, cold treatment for the cold treatment of a simple white flu gas desulfurization waste with fresh water, a fresh water sewage. And uh, we conducted the self acceleration elemental sulfur reduction systems. For the nitrogen removal, we utilized the sulfur oxidizing autotrophic denitrification process, means SOAD process. You can see autotrophic driven by sulfur. And uh, we found that this autotrophic identification based on sulfur conversion can reduce the, the, the nitric oxide uh, extensively. And uh, we published some paper involving uh, the electron competition between the nitrate, nitrite, or nitric oxide reductases between them. And we also developed the sulfur cycle associated enhanced biological phosphorus removal process. This kind of process is totally different from the uh, traditional one with the pulse or B pulse as the functional groups. We found some new one, but now we cannot confirm which this is uh, totally new or it's the associated functional groups all together. Now we are conducting this relevant experimental works now. Also, we developed some granulation process. 
for we uh, we made the high rate flotation free the SRB granules and the SOB sulfate oxidizing bacteria granules even the sulfur associate polyphosphate uh, poly, polyphosphate accumulating organism granules we developed them in our scaled up reactors for real wastewater sealing wastewater treatment process also the biofilm based new technologies as listed below aerate the SOB MBBR system sulfur laden ammonia uh, animox MBBR system even the dynamic membrane systems even the electron biochemical biofilm systems something like that the above, the above slides just to give a over, over uh, brief introduction for our work in the sending process. Now, in the next section, I want to focus on the evaluation for our sending process, which, uh, which part mainly based on our previous work for the, the pilot study. The title is the evaluation of the sending process for sealing wastewater treatment. This is a, this work, all of us work based on our previous uh, uh, pilot study. We contain two, uh, four parts, the introduction, materials and measure, result and discussion and conclusion, like that, first of all, introduction. So why we conducted the SANI pilot study? We know Hong Kong, it's, it's, a, it's a famous city for all of us, right? So it contains about 270 sewer, uh, sewerage facilities in Hong Kong, and per day, they generate, uh, they treat about uh, 2.7 million cubic meter sewage every day. They're using the chemical enhanced primary treatment, CEPT, and also a secondary treatment process, but they generate too much uh, uh, su uh, sewage sludge because they use the, the traditional wastewater treatment process for using the, the ordinary, uh, ordinary hydrotrophic organisms. And about 60% of the carbon in wastewater were, cha uh, were transferred into the sewage and finally generated the sludge. So about 2,000 tons per day dry sludge in Hong Kong. But, but you know, the Hong Kong is a small place with, with small space, right? The landfill capacity will be surprised in 2017. Actually, they have been, I have been uh, surpassed uh, their capacities for the, the the landfill. And if you burn you the incineration for the sludge, they will worsen the air, air quality and incur the public protest or something like that. Based on this, we think about can we just uh, make the sludge reduction? So we compare some uh, uh, current most effective strategies for sludge reduction, such as the sludge chlorination, about 65% sludge reduction, but they will they will generate the THMs, it's, uh, we call it cancer or something. And the second, the combination of a thermal treatment with MBR, about 60% uh, of sludge reduction, but high maintenance cost and corrosion and other problems. And uh, the OSA, we call it oxic settling anaerobic process. About 58% uh, sludge reduction may be caused. And, uh, but the, the, the ORP control, I mean, oxidation reduction potential control may be a problem during this process to achieve very high sludge reduction efficiency, right? And that's why we think about, can we redesign the conventional wastewater treatment process? The traditional one is the two cycle one, as I just mentioned in the previous slides, the two a carbon, cycle, a carbon cycles and nitrogen cycles. So, can we use a new electron shuttle to transfer our electrons efficient, efficiently? So we, we know that the Hong Kong sewage is a saline sewage from the seawater toilet flushing. So we think about the sulfate reduction and auto traffic energy can be utilized in this electron transfer process. Okay, then we use the sulfate as an electron shuttle to separate the two cycles and transfer the electrons from organic, organic carbon to nitrogen. So the question is, can the rationality of carbon sulfur nitrogen cycles be implemented? Think about the background in Hong Kong, a seawater toilet flushing. 
This is the schematic seawater supply system in Hong Kong. And this kind of system needs very simple pretreatment, saves, uh, saves about 22% fresh water supply per year. It's, it's very much for Hong Kong and very, very important, right? And after the, the seawater toilet flushing, they will generate the saline sewage. And they have the COD to sulfate ratio. Sulfate sulfate ratio is about 2.4 gram COD per gram sulfur. This kind of ratio, this kind of ratio, the sulfur, the sulfate is sufficient for COD removal in biological sulfate reduction. And the SRB, sulfate reducing bacteria, is more competitive than methane producing archaea or mesogenic anaerobic process. So we can make the implication of carbon sulfur nitrogen cycles in saline sewage treatment. Based on this concept, we built up a lab scale system. This system consists of three reactors. First one, we call it sulfate reduction upflow sludge bed to conduct the sulfate anaerobic sulfate reduction with the COD in wastewater as the electron donor. And a second, the autotrophic denitrification process in the anoxic reactor. Finally, the aerobic reactor for uh, nitrification. Okay, there's three reactors. And in our lab skill trials, we get some uh, conclusions for that. We conducted about 500 days lab skill trial with the synthetic artificial saline sewage. And about 95% COD, 74% TN removal was achieved. And we didn't purposely get the sludge withdrawal from our system. So, how about the treating the real saline sewage in the large scale or scale up this lab scale system to pilot with the raw sewage? And why no excess sludge generated withdrawal in our system, in our lab scale system? Taking the two, pro uh, the, the the, 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 we, we, we're thinking to solve this kind of uh, problems. So we designed something. First one, the model evaluation for the zero sludge waste verification for lab scale sanding process. Second, we conducted the experimental evaluation and the model evaluation and optimization for the color study. Second, we made the sludge uh, system design and system optimization in our uh, full scale, full scale demo sending process in the plant. The modeling work in this one, we developed and applied a steady state model to the sending system for performance evaluation and a zero sludge withdrawal verification. Second, we developed and applied an integrated kinetic model to sending system for system optimization. And experimental work, we conducted the pilot trial for the sending process, analyzed the, the solid fit in sending pilot plant, determined the hydrolysis constants. And we use the steady state model in the, for the lab scale and the pilot scale, even the kinetic model, we conducted the experimental work a steady state model, steady state means the constant flow and the loading and the stable system performance. The model based on the steady state and the simplified stoichiometric equations. We need, we uh, developed the steady state model and we use the design parameter and the system performance to give the, the model prediction and checking the match or not with the experimental data. And we give the design parameters as input for the kinetic model, the model based on the dynamic flow rate and loading, complicated different uh, differential equations. Finally, we optimize the system operation and refine the design parameters. We have two statistic models. First one is a lab scale statistic model, second one is a pilot steady, pilot, pilot scale statistic model. All of them, both of them contains two parts mainly, 
One is the stoichiometric plus for sulfur reduction, autotrophic denitrification, and nitrification. The second is a weak acid base chemistry part for pH, uh, for pH value prediction. But we use the artificial or synthetic saline sewage in our lab scale statistical model system. It means no biodegradable particular organics. But for the real saline sewage used in our pilot study, or raw saline sewage, we must include a, a, a anaerobic hydrolysis kinetic part. And we should consider the, the sulfide oxidation by oxygen because they will affect the alkalinity predictions. Also, we should contain the stoichiometric part for hydrogen sulfide oxidation. The kinetic model mainly includes the anaerobic sulfur reduction. We, we contain the, 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 the two parts, the acetogenesis from the polymeric molecules, such as protein, amyhydrate, lipase, to for hydrolysis and generate fermentation intermediates. And finally, the acetate and, and the acetyl, uh, acetotrophic sulfidogenesis and the hydrogen hydrogen genotrophic sulfidogenesis. <laughs> for the anoxic denitrification, we include the autotrophic denitrifier and uh, uh, heterotrophic denitrifiers. This is a mixing, this is a mixed, mixed uh, biomass. And aerobic nitrification for autotrophic nitrification. This is our, the photos is for our uh, pellet plant. They, uh, they were developed, built up in the uh, 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 sewage pump station near to Hong Kong airport. This plant were developed and uh, uh, conducted for almost uh, two years, almost two years. Also include three reactors, the SRUSB, sulfur reduction, upflow sludge bath, anaerobic. SRT is about 90 days and uh, for sulfur reduction process. Second is the autotrophic denitrification process. Use the, the sulfide, dissolved sulfide as electron donor to for uh, autotrophic denitrification. A third one is the nitrification process for uh, ammonia uh, to uh, uh, to nitrate, <clears throat> we use the 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 real saline sewage from the the Dongchong district and Hong Kong International Airport. Uh, the capacity is about ten cubic meter per day. And in this pilot plant, we don't we did not have the no the primary treatment in the sandy pilot plant. And we gave the sampling point. We take up uh, the sample every day for the alkalinity, volatile fatty acid, COD, TKN, and phosphorus analysis. Okay, we, this is uh, just to show the our our sample preparation and measurements. <laughs> also, we use the 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 five point four pH point titration method on site to to determine the, the alkalinity. <clears throat> For the anaerobic hydrolysis uh, batch testing, we developed the scan of the kinetic models to evaluate the hydraulic retention time. We give the KM, this maximum specific hydrolysis rate. <clears throat> the mono of saturation constant, we use the batch test to determine this kind of uh, this kind of uh, parameters in the in the <clears throat> kinetics model, and also we take the samples for the SP, the particulate COD concentration, hydrogen sulfide COD concentration, and the sulfide sulfide concentrations. We also made the the tracer test. Using the Rodemi WT with four waste water in the large scale application, there exist bypass flow and dead zone in the real reactors for sure. So we want to determine our in our systems what is the the bypass flow and uh, the dead zone per, uh, percentage.
Okay. So then we focus on the objective equations, including the, the influent flow rate, react volume, tracer concentration in and affluent in influent to determine that. Let's see some other results and discussion part. This is a large scale statistic model present here. It mainly, uh, mainly consists of uh, some of the stoichiometric equations you show. It's a little bit complicated here, but we, we can find that it's based on the stoichiometric, the, the mass balance. And we determine the composition for the COD in the influent, and also the sludge composition in the uh, biomass for SRB system, uh, autotrophic denitrification system, and also the autotrophic denitrification system. <clears throat> okay, use the E value. So this is uh, the this function for E is uh, using our biomass COD harvest per day divided by the biodegradable COD utilizer per day. Then we can calculate our hydraulic retention time and uh, sludge retention time. So on this candle model, we can give some uh, prediction. And we found that uh, our model predictions agreed well with the experimental data, but have some don't match point, such as the, uh, the sulfate oxidation by dissolved oxygen. And also correspondingly cause the more conception of alkalinity. The reason for that is uh, caused by the, 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 the hydrogen sulfide oxidation. So we want add the uh, hydrogen sulfide oxidation stoichiometric part in the following pilot study statistic model. We found that in our sending systems, our sludge retention time means sludge is about 98 or something. It's generally it's a lab scale study. And and this situation, about 2.2% of the, the, the COD was converted into sludge. Compared with the conventional wastewater treatment plants, about 60% was, uh, was converted into our sludge, right? Generated excessive sludge. <clears throat> and we didn't, we didn't get the sludge out of the system purposely means sludge withdrawal, not purposely. So we think that our sludge uh, increased was washed out via the affluent systems in our lab scale system. And we found that the particular, the, our measured TSS in affluent and uh, the particular COD generated, uh, uh, calculated from, uh, theoretically calculated from the sludge uh, biomass uh, generation in the, in the, in the uh, in the pollutants removal process, are uh, 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 matched with this uh, measured one, and we think that the zero sludge withdrawal during the process can be explained by this kind of matching, right? <clears throat> and uh, we found that about ninety eight percent of the alkalinity of uh, the COD was uh, was transferred into the alkalinity, means inorganic carbon, inorganic carbon. So. This kind of uh, alkalinity increase is very important in any process cause, because <clears throat> it can supply sufficient alkalinity for, for subsequent denitrification and the nitrification process. We will, we will explain this point in the following parts. And uh, the increased affluent pH can, can retain almost all the hydrogen sulfide dissolved in the water, not generation or not emissed, emissed from our water to get the, 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 the older problems, right? <clears throat> we also made some experimental evaluation for the system. This is the, the, the average influent water quality on the pellet plant. And uh, this is a real raw saline sewage generated from the sea water toilet flushing system. Now about 70, 70, uh, 77% COD and uh, was removed with uh, with consumption of 67% sulfate and subsequently generated about 124 milligram hydrogen sulfide sulfur in the effluent. 
and we increase the COD to sulfate ratio. We found that if we increase the ratio, we can get uh, the high, the higher COD removal efficiency. That means the sulfate is sufficient for the COD removal and organic loading rate, OLR, can be further increased. Also, the COD cannot be so high. Another reason is our reactor design for the, for the anaerobic sulfate reduction reactor. Because we found that is about 5% and 35% dead zone fractions in our system. Compared with other research work, um, uh, such as the, the, the big one, I mean, the scale up on the pilot study of full scale, it may be about 35 something, but we are pilot study, we are 35. And uh, in the lab scale study, in others' work, maybe 22 or 11 something percent. So our dead zone fraction is a bit high. That means the reactor should be further improved to, for their design. The SRUSB reactor has a good potential to optimize the hydraulic conditions, maybe. <clears throat> so, uh, for the autotrophic denitrification process in the anoxic reactor, about 84% 80, 80, of the nitrate was removed, was removed, denitrified, and also 85%, 80% 80 of the ammonia was also removed in the uh, autotrophic nitrifier reactors, nitrification reactors. <clears throat> Our nitrification rate is about 4.8 milligram nitrate uh, nitrogen per liter per hour, and the denitrification rate is about 4.2. Okay. So compared with other study for the media uh, surface specific ammonia nitrification rate, it's uh, about 1.1, 1.01. .1, 1 .01 kilogram nit ammonia nitrogen per, per square meter per day. And others is for denitrification is about 0.88. Our work in our study is about 25% uh, uh, higher than those in typical trickling biofilters. It's just to make a simple comparison with others work. And uh, this is a whole work for our systems. We can, sh we can show the, we show the, the water, water photos for the pilot plant influent from the influent, SRUSB effluent, <clears throat> autotrophic denitrification effluent, and the final effluent. It's, uh, it's, we can have a good one. And uh, the performance for the whole reactor totally is about 87% of the uh, TSS was removed, and about 87% of the COD was removed. In the effluent, the final effluent, the TSS concentration is below uh, 15, uh, 15 milligram per liter. And the total COD is about 54 milligram per liter. <clears throat> How about our solid phase analysis? So our solid phase, I mean, uh, suspended solids can divide into some parts, the inorganic parts, organic parts. Some of the organic parts as the, in the effluent and some one was biodegradable. And they go into the system some inorganic one and the ambiotic group one go out of the system in the effluent. And the, some of the inorganic one and the biotic group one was caused the increase in the suspended solids in our slot bed. And we calculated this value at the date SS9. It's about 0 0.63 kilogram as a suspended solids per day. And we made the accumulation in the bottom zone. This is uh, something like a sludge tank in the, at the bottom of the, the reactor. We calculated the, the sludge sample and make the calculation, accumulation. And we found that the daily, uh, the increase in the bottom part is about uh, uh, 0 0.64 kilograms suspended solids per day. It's matched each other, so we think the the increase, the night increase, the sludge go into our bottom part, and uh, that's why we have the so long, uh, so long sludge, re sludge retention time, solid retention time. <clears throat> and also, uh, the uh, observed yield coefficient, we can calculate it using the, the, the famous equation, right? <clears throat> 
considering the slot retention time and the biomass decay rate. <clears throat> And compared with uh, the, the SRUSB for uh, anaerobic sulfate reduction and methanogenic uh, anaerobic re process, even the activity side process, the, we only 40% of, the, of the, the slurry yield coefficient is the 40% of the methanogenic process and only 8% of the aerobic process. And the organic solids accumulation in ESRSB is about 0 0.09 kilo, kilo, kilogram VSS per day. <clears throat> the solids, the total solids in our system is about 68%, 60, including 20% inorganic and 48% 40, organic. Some of the solids go into the anoxic and anaerobic biofilter. And the total solid removal is about 20%. Inorganic is 15% and organic is 5%. And also about 5% of the total solids get out of our systems. The inorganic is about 2% and organic is 3%. So that's uh, caused the very low TSS concentration in phenyl effluent. It's about 15 milligram per liter. <clears throat> the inorganic solids accumulation in the SRUSB reactor is about 0 0.54 kilogram uh, uh, FSS per day. And the total solid accumulation in SRSB is uh, about 0 0.63 kilogram suspended solids per day. This match with our analysis in the, in the reactor part last slide. Okay. So our slot reduction and energy saving we make the compare region use the sunny process with the conventional uh, hydrotrophic organism process involve the sludge thickening dewatering anaerobic design and uh, and uh, using the sludge generation as the ultimate disposal for sludge the energy generation from our methane in sludge in sludge anaerobic digestion has been detected from the total energy consumption the sunny process about uh, 84% uh, of the excess slot from sunny is incombustible because it's, it's, it's an inorganic one. The slot incineration should be waived. At this situation, we just uh, thinking we, we just think about the slot treatment includes sludge thickening, dewatering, and landfill only. So we make the, the this compare region, and we found that about 35% of energy saving in our system and 90% uh, slug reduction. That means the, the, the slug reduction is based on the biological slug reduction, biological one. And we make an assumption if we use this kind of technology in the, in the and the seawater toilet flushing around some cities in China uh, uh, near to the sea, right? And we can make uh, about 3,600 million cubic meters per, uh, per year fresh water saving and generate about 455,000 uh, 455, tons dry slot per year and saving the, 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 the very big uh, energy saving, right? <clears throat> so this is our, based on our calculation, maybe the, uh, a little bit theoretical one. <clears throat> but this uh, can show us that the, the this kind of sending process has their meaning for uh, sludge uh, reduction and uh, energy saving. <clears throat> Based on the lab scale statistic model, we also developed the pilot scale statistic model for performance evaluation and verification why we are zero sludge withdrawal in the sending pilot study. Based on the two parts, artificial one, we also make uh, the anaerobic hydrolysis kinetic part and the stoichiometric part for hydro, uh, hydrogen sulfide oxidation. <clears throat> we divided the hydrolysis kinetics, I mean uh, the, the, the anaerobic hydrolysis process divided into three parts, three steps. The first one is the hydrolysis and uh, uh, the means the biodegradable particular organics, BPO, such as a protein, carbohydrate, Carbohydrates, lipase, whereas 
hydrolyzed into the amino acid, sugar, fatty acid, and alcohols. Second one, the acetogenesis process uh, generate about 30% of the COD, I mean the, the electrons go into the hydrogen, hydrogen gas, and the, we, uh, uh, the acetate. <coughs> A third one is the sulfidogenesis process, the hydro, hydro, <coughs> hydrogenotrophic sulfidogenesis and acetoglacic sulfidogenesis process. Finally, we generate the, the products for uh, the hydrogen sulfide. They contain the, the, the electrons. And the first one and the second steps are the limiting steps. So we focus on the lowest rate limiting steps because the this kind of steps determine all the all the hydrolysis process, the speed. And <clears throat> statistic equations we used for the anaerobic hydrolysis acetogenesis. Here we calculated the endogenous residue COD, biomass COD, particularly organic COD, hydrogen sulfide COD anaerobic hydrolysis rate, and we calculated, based on this calculation, we used the, some parameters, uh, such as SRT, HRT, and we get the maximum specific hydrolysis rate based on our batch test. It's about 3.25, and the half saturation constant is about 557 milligram COD per liter. <clears throat> based on this, we calculate the sulfide oxidation here and uh, and they generate we change to the also to the, the alkalinity and we use the simplified stoichiometric equations based on the pilot study statistic model for biological sulfide reduction in SRUSB system and autotrophic uh, denitrification nitrification process we found that our affluent pH is about 7.8. At this kind of pH value, about 10% uh, uh, of hydrogen sulfide in the H2S, and 90% is in the, uh, in the, in the ions uh, system. That means all the hydrogen sulfide dissolved in the water, no gas emission, no other problems. The SRSP reactor, the observed yield coefficient is about 0 0.02 kilogram VSS per kilogram COD removed. For the autotrophic denitrification system, the sludge yield is about uh, point, point 0.1 kilogram VSS per kilogram nitrate nitrogen denitrified. And for nitrifica uh, nitrification is about uh, 0 0.07. So totally, the same process, the observed yield coefficient is about 0 0.02 kilogram VSS per cubic meter, uh, cubic meter ceiling sewage were treated. This model, we use the model to compare the measured mark value and the predictions. We found that the model predictions uh, corresponded quite well with the measurements. <clears throat> But uh, for the COD removal, we assumed that the SRUCB is an ideal complete mixing reactor, but not because we have the, the, the dead zone fraction and the bypass flow fraction. And uh, we gave the good, we gave the good hydrogen sulfide oxidation uh, prediction because we add the hydrogen sulfide oxidation stoichiometric equations into the system. And also for the uh, for the alkalinity prediction. Based on the statistical model, we also developed the the, the, the kinetic model. Use the this you can see the spreadsheet. We, this matrix contains about fourteen process and uh, and the nineteen components com, uh, components in the system. This is a little bit complicated one. I don't show so much details. I just to show you the equations here. And we also included the inhibition equations because we know the hydrogen sulfide maybe cause some uh, enzyme inhibition for the biomass. Okay. And uh, some 
uh, stoichiometric and kinetic constants. Some of one we just adopted from other research work and some we did in our batch test. <clears throat> the most important parameters, hydrolysis kinetic constant, the Km, the maximum, and the, the half saturation constant were achieved in our anaerobic hydrolysis batch testing. <clears throat> And we make the comparison. We found that a good correlation with the measurements and prediction. <clears throat> because we have the bypass flow and dead zone, so a little bit uh, differential difference in the in this comparison. <clears throat> and actually, we have found uh, some difference because uh, we think that uh, we have the ideal anoxic conditions in our anoxic reactor, but actually not because our uh, external recycle from the, the uh, aerobic nitrification reactor to our denitrification reactor. They contain the DO, oxygen, oxygen uh, dissolved oxygen in the recycle flow. This kind of DO will oxidize, uh, will, will oxidize our hydrogen sulfide in the autotrophic, uh, in the autotrophic denitrification reactor. <coughs> But for the nitrogen prediction is very good, uh, perfect predictions for the denitrification and nitrification nitrogen removal. We also made some uh, the system optimization. The organic loading rate is critical for COD removal, the reactor volume and hydraulic retention time, hydraulic retention time, HRT. And we found that we use different organic loading rate, but we get the similar result finally at the steady state. But the organic loading rate is uh, above the 2.5, uh, 2.52 kilogram COD per cubic meter per day. Then the other dynamic model simulation system will find the, the error. And uh, we saw, that's why we designed, we uh, set the maximum organic loading rate at the 2.52. We get the minimum HRT for SRB reactor is about four hour and anoxic reactor is 2.4 hour and all same for the anoxic uh, uh, aer uh, aerobic reactor for the nitrification process. <clears throat> the external recycle, they contain the, some oxygen, but the ratio in the real product, the ratio, external ratio is uh, important. And we made the ratio, uh, we, we increase the ratio and we found the, the natural removal rate changed. And the optimum range for the recycle ratio was between 2.5 and 2.75. So that's why we use the 2.5 in the pellet study. We give some conclusions for the evaluation. We, we conducted a lab scale steady state model for verified zero sludge withdrawal in the in a 500 days lab scale trial of sandy process. And the supplied recommendation for pilot study steady state model. Even we add the we add the hydrolysis kinetics and the stoichiometric for hydrogen sulfur oxidation. <clears throat> and we in the 225 days pilot study trial with a capacity of 10 cubic meter per day real saline sewage. <clears throat> we achieved a very good COD, TSS, ammonia, nitrate removal, and sludge reduction and receiving. <clears throat> Our pilot statistic model can clearly explain the cause, the causes, and the condition for sludge minimization in sandy process. So we also developed the kinetic simulation model to determine, to make the optimization for our system, to determine the maximum organic loading rate, Maxim, uh, minimum hydraulic, uh, hydraulic retention time for our three reactors to minimize the, the nitrate removal optimized range for, for the external recycle. And, uh, and uh, we choose the, the best external recycle ratio is about 2.5. So that's a, that's a brief introduction for all the work and what is SANI and uh, give the evaluation for SANI pilot study. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Liu, for a, a very interesting uh, lecture. Um, I think it was really nice to see the, uh, the juxtaposition, the, the um, combination of the theoretical uh, as well as the application and the practical. So 
uh, at this point. Um, uh, any questions for our speaker? Either uh, you can un unmute your microphone and ask them uh, directly, or you can send them uh, via the, the group chat. And I see that uh, there's a question from Verena. Dr. Look, can you see the, uh, the, the group chat question from Verena? No, oh, okay, okay, I'll okay. open the, okay. So we're allowed to consider the shifting, the shift to use the policy work to have successful implementation of the Senate local on their concrete plans to include heat and sewer treatment in other cities in China or the world. What is the cost? Uh, in starting the running aid, teacher perform the transfer with the seawater sludge for long business as composition may be varied, but the success. Yeah, thank you for the question from uh, from Verena. Yes. Uh, we usually we have the successful impl implementation in Hong Kong only now until now only in hong kong and another project in cuba in cuba the university of havana they have the pilot study also and uh, in hong kong uh, not only we want uh, now we are doing the you know we discuss with the government in Qingdao, uh shandong province to conduct some uh, real project for using the use the sandy process to treat the real sandy sewage uh, for the cost of installation rate, uh, sorry, I cannot answer this question because uh, uh, I'm not the engineering guy. And uh, for my work, I mainly focus on the academic ones or the, some research work for the installation and the run. Running it, I think, uh, I cannot give you the detail, uh, the exact value, but uh, but uh, I think the running, running this kind of system is very, uh, the, the cost is low. Uh, actually, we have published one paper in water research to discussing the, the real, I mean, our sunny demonstration plant operation and uh, their evaluation system. And uh, and uh, you can you can check just a search for the sunny demo study. I think you can find this 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 paper in water research. Uh, with the seawater from other place. Sorry, we, uh, yes, the trials we, we performed because uh, the uh, performed the trials with, with the seawater from other place. Yes, you are right, the composition different. Actually, for us, we, we do not. We just, uh, we play this kind of, uh, we use the seawater in Hong Kong. And the first one, second one, we use the seawater uh, in Cuba. No, the University of Havana. This is a project in there, and we also have the uh, uh, cooperator in uh, Deft University. Deft University, TU Deft. They use the seawater there to to for this kind of sandy process for testing. Okay, I'm not sure I answer your question or not. Thank you very much for your question. Maybe I could follow up on that question. Um, okay. And uh, I, I think the, the part of the, the last part of that question was about the fact that the, the seawater concentration might vary from location to location. Yes. Um, and that leads me to the question of whether there's any possibility of actually uh, introducing salt into uh, uh, wastewater systems in locations that are not directly uh, adjacent to oceans. Yeah. So, so, so you is, mean, it, is, you it mean? Possible, is it possible yeah. to use this where you actually artificially uh, increase the, the salt concentration in your waste uh, treatment oh. prior to treatment? Oh. Uh, yes, uh, in, the, in the lab scale, we use the artificial uh, saline sewage, but but that not not actually the real uh, synthetic one. We get the the the, the, uh, the you know we, we made our feed, our influence with the the seawater, real seawater, 
can add some mineral, some uh, nutrients in that. That's kind of artificial, not really use the, the chemicals to, 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 to make one. But we use the seawater, but not the seawater toilet flushing with water, you know. That's what we call it artificial. I'm not sure I can answer, answer your question. Because the, the, uh, yeah, mic, the audio system is it's not so clear here. Sometimes it's very noisy. No, that, that's fine. I see you have another question uh, on the uh, chat. Oh, is there any possible direction? Direct reaction between sulfate and organic without sludge? Hmm? Without sludge? No, 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 cannot. It's uh, this kind of a, it's a biological process. It must, uh, uh, must have the functional microorganism such as the sulfate reduction, you know, we, we, now we have lots of uh, the, the sediments in our river in the summer day, in the hot, hot weather, will very, you know, ugly order. That's conducted by the, the, the SRB, sulfate reduction uh, bacteria. Uh, temperature. Yeah, the temperature, uh, that's a good question. Um, yes, the, the sandy process is influenced by the temperature really. Because uh, you know we conduct this experimental work in Hong Kong, the temperature is okay. The lowest one is about uh, 10 to 15 in the in the year. But uh, if you in the in the uh, north part of China, it's very low uh, weather. Maybe the temperature very low. Maybe yes, yes, uh, that's a problem. Yeah, cannot. We should keep a, a warm temperature. The trail will be going on in North Park. Yes, you are right. In Dalian City, I'm not sure it's a question. Uh, maybe you know, you know, some uh, even the denitrification system, you know, for AO process in the north part of China, maybe Dalian, maybe Harbin, they build the, the reactor in the room, in the room, not outside, so, and maybe uh, and keep the temperature. And the bacteria need the temperature. Sure. Thank you. Very good question. Thank you. Uh, it appears there is a still significant amount of diesel sulfate species is still, uh, still in the effluent. Uh, does the residue should be in the treated effluent cause any arsenic issues such as water? Is there any treatment steps need before discharge to waterway? Okay, okay. Thank you, Joe. Um, uh, you know, you know our final reactor. Our final reactor is the uh, is the aerobic one for nitrification process. After that, in the final effluent of our plant, sandy plant, no any uh, uh, reductive hydrogen sulfide outside the system, it's toxic. If we contain the hydrogen sulfide, you cannot discharge this kind of effluent in the, in the water body. Sure, so, uh, so don't worry about that because the last one is the anaerobic reactor for denitrification, uh, for nitrification process, remember? We have three one, the anaerobic sulfate reduction, the autotrophic denitrification. This one is the anoxic. The last one is aerobic uh, for the nitrification process. If we have some residue gen, uh, get, get out of the anoxic reactor, then go into the final one, aerobic reactor, then be oxidized into the sulfate. So thanks. Thanks very much. Okay, what is Hong Kong doing now? The land capacity is surpassed. Send it to produce and view. Hong Kong? Actually, Hong Kong, yes, they generate lots of uh, solid waste. And uh, as I know, because uh, really I don't, I don't much, uh, I don't learn so, so much of details about Hong Kong's how to they, they do the landfill capacity problems, but I know they they burned some they do the uh, do the solid incineration in the in the incineration. Uh, yes, <laughs> I don't know how to say, but yes, it's uh, it's Hong Kong. It's a small place. Some uh, solid waste will you know transfer to uh, transformed to other place. And for burning or something, 
I, I know they have uh, built up a very big uh, uh, sludge or solid waste incineration plant now near to uh, uh, near to Shenzhen, this side, mainland of China part. Thank you. Thank you. Do Thank we you have so any further questions for our speaker? Why is one computer there distribution system to accommodate the use of sewage? Oh, this is a very, very big question. Yes, uh, uh, you know, you know, Hong Kong use the fresh use. They need fresh water, but they don't have. And then the fresh water for there, they use uh, uh, some parts. Some are from the Dongjiang River in the mainland, from the mainland of China. Some of the reservoir they collect the rain, the rain water, and uh, so they have to build the 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 seawater toilet flushing systems and uh, you know they get uh, I, I show the i show the figure in the in the in the next section part and then they just uh, collect uh, the seawater from uh, uh, from the sea and uh, do very simple pretreatment then use the the distribution system pump the water seawater uh, pretreated seawater into every uh, every ho every every house for the seawater toilet flushing only to save the fresh water. I assume it is also pretty rough on toilet, right? I think <laughs> it's, uh, you know, if you go to Hong Kong, you can find that the, they use uh, uh, almost 80% uh, almost of, uh, of, the, of the people were, uh, were covered for using the seawater toilet flushing to save the, the fresh water because very expensive for them, the, the fresh water. So they build, the system is very good. As uh, I use, uh, you know, I lived in the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology for uh, six years. And uh, all the systems is the seawater toilet flushing is not so tough. I think <laughs> yeah, it's very common in Hong Kong. Thank you, thank you. Okay, if there are no other questions then, but we're getting a little bit on in time here. I do want to thank our uh, speaker again for a really interesting lecture today. Thank you, Professor Liu. Um, thank you. It, it, was, uh, it was great to have you uh, present to us today. Um, I'll just remind people that um, uh, we Dang will be uh, staying online uh, following uh, the, once we're finished here. Uh, any people who would like to uh, engage in a discussion of the uh, lecture today, you're more than welcome to, to join him. Uh, and look forward to having you uh, join us for our lecture next week. So thank you all and goodbye. Thank you, thank you, bye-bye.